Hey guys, I'm here today with Trish, my mum, and we are going to do a bit of a fact-finding interview for you um, so we can share it with you and let you know about her journey so far and um, hopefully keep you updated throughout um, this process right through to our walk. So we've got a number of questions ready to ask um, that have been supplied by um, our Facebook followers. So thank you so much for them. Mum, thank you so much for spending this time with us. I really do appreciate it. The first question that we've got for all you is to um, let us know a little bit about you. Tell us about your life and everything so far. Okay, my name is Trish. I'm married to Steve. Um, married, oh my goodness, 38 years. Um, I have two lovely grown up daughters, eight grandchildren, gorgeous. Um, I'm currently working in the public service. I've um, had to make some career changes throughout throughout my life. Um, I am a qualified hairdresser and beauty therapist. I used to own my own business. Um, I noticed things were going downhill and uh, a few reasons. I looked for a different job. Um, yeah, I now work for the public service. So tell me about the old you. The, the one that you remember back and think, oh my God, those were the days. Um, a little bit wild. Um, I like to work hard, party hard. I had um, great friends that used to party with me. Um, yeah, I was vibrant. I was energetic. I played a lot of sport. Um, you could do almost anything. Oh, there was nothing I couldn't do. If, if someone said I couldn't do it, I would do it. You climbed Mount Kosciuszko? I've climbed Mount Kosciuszko. I've climbed a few mountains. Um, yeah, go out deep sea fishing, used to go kayaking, um, yes, my weekends were filled with off-road adventures, fishing adventures and um, anything that was sporting. Perfect. So mum, tell me about your wildest memory when you look back at your life and you think, oh my god, I can't believe I did that. Oh, you were only a baby yeah. and um, your dad agreed to look after you for a long weekend while I headed off to Narara with my girlfriends. Wild weekend of rock music, partying, trying different foods, sleeping in tents. Um, yeah, it was pretty wild back in the day and um, I could have, would have loved doing that for the rest of my life. <laughs> I actually heard a story that you snuck in alcohol into this Oh yes, yes. I was the only one out of all my girlfriends that were able to get it in through the gates. <laughs> Those were the days. So I had to share that with everyone, but there was a, a big flagon. So you were like the favourite, the favourite party girl? Oh, I wouldn't say I was the favourite, but you I, had the I, booze. <laughs> I, I had the booze that weekend. <laughs> so when did you notice your health starting to change? Oh, I would have been at least 20 years ago um, when I had trouble walking, moving. We'd recently just brought a new house, two-storey house, and I found it impossible to walk up the stairs. Um, I went to various GPs, he eventually was referred to a rheumatologist who diagnosed me with lupus, which was devastating at the time because my dad had been diagnosed with this. And within four years of him being diagnosed, he died at 49. Mm. My mum died not that long after. Um, and I just remember what my dad went through and didn't know how I would be able to tolerate his strength mm. to get through it um, and watch someone deteriorate so badly. So you had a health scare only recently, um, late last year. What was that? Um, I've had trouble breathing um, for a while. Uh, I knew I had an appointment coming up for my overseas trip to get a listing of all my medication. Um, so I held off uh, until that appointment. When I went to see my doctor, um, they did an ECG and told me I'd had a heart attack. Called an ambulance, rushed me to hospital. I was in um, emergency for a few days um, and a Apparently my lungs had filled up with fluid and they did a series of tests. They questioned the lupus. It wasn't showing up in my blood tests um, and I'd been taking medication for many years for it. Um, and it wasn't until a professor came in 
uh, to have a look at me and noticed how hard my skin was. Um, I just thought it was because I'd been putting a lot of moisturiser on it. Um, but he was the one that started to do the tests and after a couple of visits with him he's confirmed it's um, scleroderma. Um, I'm just in the process of him trying to get a treatment plan for me. Hopefully it will work or I've been told you can't cure it but they can help manage the symptoms that I'm going through. So you mentioned um, in that question earlier you went to the doctors before you went overseas. So obviously you had an overseas trip booked. Yeah. Did you get to go on that one? My first overseas trip. I was so excited. Um, the doctors in the hospital said you won't be going overseas but towards the end of it they agreed that it couldn't hurt me and I took off to Guam with my husband and my daughter and eldest granddaughter. It was a lovely trip. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was an experience but I wasn't able to do a lot of the things that they were doing. I sat back and watched. But it was, yeah, um, I can say I've been overseas. Yeah, it was an amazing trip and we met some amazing people. We should say uh, hello to L Lilani. Lani. Hi Lilani and, and hi dad. Bing, hi. Lovely people I met over there that took good care of us. Um, I just hope that I can meet up again with them throughout my lifetime. Yeah, it was a pretty special trip. Yeah. I was so glad that, that I could do that with you. Oh, it was lovely and such lovely people and um, and thanks to Lani, um, it was even better. Yeah, we had a great time. And Dad caught a marlin. He, he <laughs> caught a marlin, that was pretty special. So you were diagnosed with scleroderma in the hospital. Can you tell the people what scleroderma is for you? What are some of the symptoms? Well, I'm still learning a lot about scleroderma, but my symptoms are that um, uh, a lot of old injuries where I've, I've had breaks in my bones are now back to the way they were when I broke them. Um, I think it's just, uh, attacking the scar tissue. I, I don't know, I haven't had confirmation on that. Um, my joints swelling, my hands don't operate anymore. Um, I find it hard to hold a pen. It's so hard to clean my teeth and keep up my personal hygiene, even holding soap. I can't do it. it just falls out and if I use liquid soap it doesn't my ha hands arch I have ulcers on the tips of my fingers which throb constantly um, constant acid burn or heartburn um, rushes like orange peel rushes over me that itch really badly um, I'm losing my sense of movement um, you find it really hard to even turn your head properly now, don't yes, you? Yes, my skin is really tight. Um, it's hard to pull faces or turn. Um, I could go on, but I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure other people know that have suffered with this, um, and I'm sure it's different on each and every person. And, and I think that that's one of the hardest things is that every case of scleroderma is so different um, mm. so it's really a matter of trying to treat those symptoms mm. as much as we can yeah the doctor has given me hope what um, sort of hope is he giving you mum? well before i went to see him i just thought how bad do you have to be before they put you into palliative care mm. but after i left i had trouble walking to the surgery um, my daughter helped me and my husband um, he gave me hope and said that um, he wants to think about all my symptoms. He wants to consult with other professionals in this area. He has reassured me that he's treated other, many other people with this disease. And hopefully in a week and a half's time, I might start something that will relieve some of the symptoms. What's that, they're gonna try you or not? Oh, I, he, hasn't, he hasn't told me yet. <laughs> Are you sure? I, a little oh, birdie told me that oh, it was yeah. this little blue pill called Viagra. Yeah, he has mentioned Viagra, which I was shocked about. Three pills a day. Um, I'm just concerned if I actually get stiffer or not. <laughs> um, that could be a problem. Um, so, I don't know. Before he starts anything, he wants to be reassured by other professionals in that area. Yeah, and we've been having lots of tests done um, recently. Um, we went to have a CT scan, we've had blood tests, which actually went quite well, considering normally they find it really hard to get blood, and we were very lucky on the day, um, and we have got...
got a um, heart ultrasound um, that we're doing on Tuesday. Yes. So once we get all of those tests done, we're going to go back to the professor um, and that's where we get to find out the treatment plan um, and if my mum will be trying Viagra, which will be quite interesting. One of the questions um, that one of my dear baseball mums put to us is um, obviously about scleroderma, which we've answered, but what is it that we can do to help? Well, there's not a lot known about this disease. Um, uh, with the frustration my husband was under watching me deteriorate, he came up with this idea um, to walk to Area Park, his parents' hometown, and one he remembers fondly as a child, um, and I do too, um, some wild times in Area Park when I was a teenager. Um, and my daughter and her husband said, yeah, Dad, we'll do this with you. At first I said he had rocks in his head, <laughs> but then I can understand too. What we want to do is to find out more about this so that not only people like myself, but anyone that comes down with it, mm -hmm. um, We'll know if there's uh, treatments, action plans, or what we can do to have a better quality of life. That's exactly right. And there are so many amazing um, research things that they're trying out at the moment, the stem cell research. And um, all of this is not funded um, by the government. It's people making special grants and fundraising. So we want to fundraise as much money as we can. Um, so we can find out more um, and have the, the professors and the research professionals find out more about this horrible, horrible disease. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, and I, I'd like some answers and yeah, some pathways I can follow to a, to, to a better life. So we had a, um, a late question come through our Facebook page and it is from my sister and your daughter Carissa. Um, she wanted to know what colour underwear you're wearing today. Underwear? Who's wearing underwear? Come on, it's a hot day. Underwear was so <laughs> last year anyway. Oh look, it's overrated. <laughs> now actually, I have <laughs> I have skin tone on. Whatever I'm wearing on the day, I'll adapt my underwear to it. <laughs> So guys, this brings us to our end of our first documentary with my mum. Um, this was a big thing for her because she hates the camera, hates being videoed um, and she has um, put her hand up and said yes um, because she wants to get her story out there now and um, let people know about the disease. So we're going to take this one step further um, once we visit her doctors on um, next 15th. 15th of February. We're going to touch base with you again um, and let you know what sort of treatment plan is put in place. We'll let you know if she'll be taking the Viagra pills, um, which will be very, very interesting. Um, but I want to thank you, Mum, for allowing us to, to do this interview today. No, thank you. And thank you to all you out there. And thank thanks, you. Talia.